Well, welcome to uh, part three uh, of our little explorations in the Psalms. We're in uh, Psalm 3 uh, this morning. And uh, I want to ask the question, um, where will we turn when trouble comes? Where will we turn when trouble comes? So if you remember back to the first two Psalms, we had um, that question in Psalm 1 about uh, who will we follow? Um, which path will we head down in life? Uh, Psalm 2 is that question uh, really for the whole world. Uh, which king are you going to follow? Which king uh, are you going to serve? And then Psalm 3 begins with trouble. So we've been told in Psalm 1 uh, which way we should follow. Psalm 2, which king we should serve. Uh, okay, gr that's great. But what do we actually do when uh, life gets hard? What do we do when trouble comes? And uh, you'll see from Psalm 3, if you've got a Bible, do uh, grab it, and I'm going to read it for us in a moment, that it's set in the context of David fleeing from his son Absalom. And uh, Absalom is uh, plotting a coup, and you can read along the, the story in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 15. Uh, the Psalm 3, it begins with a, a little inscription at the top, a psalm of David when he fled from Absalom his son. Let me read uh, Psalm 3 for us. O Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord and he answered from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me. All around, arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. Well, Dale Ralph Davis, in uh, the little book we're following, The Way of the Righteous and the Muck of Life, um, divides this psalm up into to four little sections, uh, two verses each. I think it's just a helpful uh, way to break it down so we can see what's going on in the psalm. Uh, and the first thing he points us to is the, the enemies that we face in verse uh, 1 and 2. Uh, David is uh, surrounded by enemies. Um, his son has plotted against him. Uh, he's had to flee uh, from Jerusalem. Uh, and his enemies are accusing him. They're saying there's no salvation for him. Uh, sometimes life can feel like that, that we're uh, surrounded, pressures on every side. And there's people and situations which are making us doubt whether God really cares. Of course, there are big situations going on in the world at the moment which make us wonder, does God really care? Is God really there? I think that's the situation that we're, we're all facing at the moment. That we feel a little bit like that. Is God there for us? But then he uh, wants us to think about the God that we confess. Verses uh, 3 and 4. Look at what we learn of our God. He's a shield about me. He's the one who, who lifts up our head uh, when we're downcast. He lifts us up. And most strikingly in verse 4. He's the God who answers. David says, he, I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. Uh, just as the, the throne is not empty in Psalm 2, so uh, the hill in Psalm 3 is not silent. This is the God we confess, the God who is able to protect, who answers our cries. Verse 5 is, is quite striking, really. Uh, what do we find David doing in the, in the midst of a crisis, in the midst of a coup? He's sleeping. Uh, he trusts the Lord enough to find a place to rest, to find somewhere to sleep. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. Uh, the Lord kept him going, even in the midst of uh, real pressures, real uh, enemies surrounding him. He was able to sleep confident in the Lord's sustaining power. And so verse 6, he says, I will not be afraid. 
despite all these enemies, despite all these things going on, I will not fear because God was with him. That's the peace that he enjoys, that God is with him even in the midst of real trial. And look at verses 7 and 8. Uh, Ralph Davis describes this bit as the, the, the help that you expect. What is the help that you expect? Well, it's God's salvation. It's God's uh, rescue. Uh, it's striking the way that uh, David speaks of God's salvation as though it's already happened. Uh, he's not yet been rescued from his enemies. He's not yet been saved. He, he's not yet returned to Jerusalem. And yet he has confidence that God will rescue, that he will save. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For you strike all my enemies. You break the teeth of the wicked. David's confident that even though he hasn't experienced that rescue yet, that God will save, that he will rescue him from his enemies. And the psalm closes with, a, 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 I suppose, a, a blessing for all. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. Uh, David is confident that he will be rescued. He's also confident that God's rescue will uh, flow out to many people. And uh, that's what we experience today. Uh, we experience the, uh, the rescue of the Lord Jesus, uh, knowing that he has won the victory against sin and death, confident that he will return and to bring his blessing uh, for all his people for all eternity. So friends, we, uh, we began our first two psalms with that question, who are you going to follow? Which path are you going to head down in life? Which king are you going to serve? And Psalm 3 brings trouble into that situation, just as we've had uh, trouble on a global scale brought. But we're reminded about those questions. Who, who will we serve? Which king will we follow? Even in the midst of trouble. And David is confident that it is the Lord. The Lord in the midst of all his troubles, in the midst of all his uncertainties, who will certainly and surely rescue and save him. And today, that gives us great hope and confidence, trusting in a God who will save, who will rescue. Amen.